the high rates of failure, the monopoly, the royalty collections, a hundred, a thousand crores, which is 10 billion rupees, which is about $500 million, is the royalty outflow on cotton, just on cotton. 95% of the cotton is now owned and controlled by Monsanto. And what that does for the farmer, where's this money coming from? But farmers who get into debt and indebted farmers are committing suicide, mostly in the cotton belt. 250,000, a quarter million farmers have committed suicide in the last 15 years. That's official government of India data. And that violence for me is totally unacceptable. It's not necessary because if you have farmer's seed, open pollinated seed, farmers do organic farming, they get a fair price for what they grow, no suicide should be taking place. And that's why we've started Fibers of Freedom a program in the suicide belt of Maharashtra to create seed banks, which is what we do. We've created 66 across the country over the last 25 years to help farmers go organic and to then help build a market. And I hope so many of you who want to help in the virtuous cycle will join in the fibers of freedom in whatever way you can. There's also violence to other species. We did studies on the soil, 22% beneficial organisms dead because of the release of the toxin. Studies from Cornell that show that the monarch butterfly was killed when it was fed genetically engineered Bt pollen from corn. Recently, studies have been done in Switzerland that the lacewing beetle larvae are dying. Um, so it's an assault on biodiversity. It's also an attack on science. And I think that's a big issue that we haven't addressed at this conference. Because the point is not just the relationship between spirituality and science, but different kinds of science. And what is parading today is science is not science anymore. You can't assume that a genetically modified organism is equal to its non-genetically modified parent. They call it substantial equivalence. It's totally cooked up unscientific principle. And then the same companies that say we don't have to be regulated because this is substantially equivalent to the natural, go and say the patent is ours because this is totally new. So it's new when it comes to owning and collecting royalties, and it's the same as nature when it comes to disowning responsibilities for the outcome and the pollution. I call this ontological schizophrenia. <laughs> and it gets worse. Uh, we are constantly told the world will starve without genetic engineering. Chemical use will come down. Pests and weeds will disappear. There has been no yield increase because yield is a multigenetic trait. It doesn't come out of shooting one toxic gene into a plant. Chemical use has gone up on our studies, 13 times more chemicals being used for pest control because new pests have been created. And as far as the issue of controlling pests and weeds are concerned, um, 11 million acres in the United States are now overtaken by superweeds where they're now recommending use of Agent Orange because Roundup is not working anymore. And in India, as I mentioned, the bollworm has emerged resistance. And then because there is real science being done, what do the corporations do? Go after the scientists. There's such an attack on independent science. I have watched my friend Arpat Putsai lose his job. Ignatius Chappella at Berkeley, nearly hounded out. Um, and Irina Ernikova of the Russian Academy of Science, who did research on rats, and she wasn't looking for it, but found that GM feed gave half the rats tumors. Um, all that is being shut down, so you'd have a don't look, don't see policy, and therefore you say, no harm, no proof. It's also an attack at a very basic level on democracy and freedom, an issue that has come up in this conference very often. And we don't need 
this kind of manipulation of our knowledge, our democracy, our biodiversity, our food system, the killing of our farmers, and the destruction of the life-giving potential of seed, because it is possible to produce more food by working with the earth, working with nature. We've done a study called Health Per Acre, because I was starting to get a bit fed up with the yield per acre assessment. It measures nothing. Yield per acre measures how much commodity you produce. It doesn't tell you what you stopped producing, and it doesn't tell you how much it cost ecologically, financially, and socially. And in any case, these commodities aren't going to feed people. A lot of it is going for animal feed. A large part is now going for biofuel because of the subsidies. So it's not food for people. Our study on actual practices of biodiverse organic farming compared to monocultures of chemical farming show that we could, for example, be producing 128 kilograms per acre more of protein, which would feed 2.5 billion people a year if it was practiced as the agriculture across the country. Beta carotene, they want to do a genetically engineered golden rice with pathetic 34 micrograms of vitamin A equivalent. We can produce 2,174 and f have enough vitamin A for 1.5 billion adults every year. Folic acid, we can produce 1.7 billion, uh, for, for 1.7 billion pregnant women. Iron, which is the most significant reason for anemia in women, uh, an iron deficiency, for 20 billion we could be producing it. If you weren't wiping out your greens with herbicides, if you weren't destroying the diversity of your crops, as Gandhi had said, the earth has enough for everyone's needs, but not for some people's greed. And that is why, that is why we practice what I call earth democracy. The recognition that you are part of the earth, the recognition that we have shrunk our existence, our brains, our minds, our potential, first from understanding the universe, shrinking it, forgetting the earth and Gaia, forgetting other species, making it all anthropocentric, but as if that wasn't enough, forgetting the women, forgetting non-Western cultures, forgetting all they know, and assuming that the only knowledge is the knowledge that serves power rather than life. So I left university and I left, left my love affair with the quanta. Um, because I found that the assault on life of both human beings and the diversity of other life forms was now so intense that if we did not respond soon enough, we could make this land, this earth, uninhabitable for ourselves. And that's why I've started the Earth University, the Beach Vidya Peet, along with Satish. We're trying to create gardens of hope with the widows, with the children, which create care for the earth, relationship, and actually give us more nutrition. We need a shift in consciousness, a shift in consciousness that allows us to see the abundance that nature gives us, to allow us to be co-creators and not conquerors. And I want to end with a quotation from Tagore, from Banopani, the voice of the forest. The language of nature, he says, is the eternal language of creation. It penetrates reality to reach the deepest layers of our consciousness. It draws upon a language that has survived thousands of years with the human. It is the musical instrument of nature. It replicates the rhythm inherent in life itself. If we listen carefully, we will be able to trace within them the murmurs of eternity where the spirit of liberation, peace, and beauty lurk. It reminds us of the sea that is santam, shivam, advaitam. It reminds us of our bond with the world. If we accept this music of the wild within us, we can perceive the great music of oneness. Thank you.